One of the benefits of my years in CCM was meeting my now husband, Adam. He actually joined the band as our drummer in 2015. Our story really is very special, but the short version is nobody saw it coming. We did not see it coming. I was actually engaged to someone else. My world got flipped upside down. We broke things off quite publicly, might I add. It was the first time that I got a real taste of what it was like to fail publicly. And guess what? I got hooked. I'll get back to that later. So I remember falling so hard for Adam and just falling so fast and being so in love that I just knew it was it had to be wrong somehow because I was taught that martyrdom was closest to holiness so being this happy just couldn't be right. And I don't often hear like a voice of God but I do remember praying, God if, if this is wrong, if being this happy is wrong, I'm okay being wrong. And I remember hearing back, who do you think I am? Of course I want you to be happy. Then slowly but surely, my idea of who God is started to shift. And what I once believed started being stripped away and replaced with something freer, something better, something holier. And so much more in line with who I truly believe God is. So Adam and I got married January 6th, 2018. And about halfway through the year, our band started falling apart. Things really started to come crashing down. And Adam and I were left with a lot of change in our life and a lot of questions. Our doubts, our personal and spiritual identities were really rocked. They were really called into question. So shortly after getting married, we went through a series of mental, emotional, spiritual, financial challenges, to say the least. It led us to dun 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 deconstruction. So without our careers, a church family, a support system, I dove headfirst into my questions, into my doubts, into my deconstruction. I started tearing things apart, reanalyzing, revisiting, really all the things that I've been taught. So if you're not into Enneagram, I apologize. Just hang tight, but I'm gonna go there just real quick. So I'm a five with a close tie to being eight. So imagine if you will, the researcher five in me going through deconstruction with a very close tie eight challenger in me going through deconstruction. Adam jokes about how he had no idea how deep into it I was until one day I basically presented him with a thesis and explained how I was about to post the most controversial video, most controversial post I have like ever posted before at that time. And I did it. And I lost a ton of support and it was really a dramatic time in my life. I actually got sick twice in one month because of all the drama that ensued from that, just the one, the one post. And guess what? Again, I got hooked. Anyway, so years later, and it seems that I'm just still trying to make people mad all the time on my socials, bringing things to light that make people uncomfortable or whatever. I love to share my experiences. I love to share my thoughts and my questions and my journey. Essentially, I love to document my human experience as a spiritual being. Deconstruction then led me to reconstruction. There are specific generational traumas that I am doing my best to heal. I now understand that the future must be indigenized. It's one thing to recognize systems that are colonized and to be frustrated. It's another to do something about it, to incorporate my indigenous roots back into my life and into my mentality and into the world. One of the ways we can do that is by taking care of ourselves and the planet simultaneously. So let's explore the idea of a spiritual connection to the earth because we all truly do deserve the peace and the healing that can come from that connection. And like I said, it's strange that within a lot of Christianity, it's, it's, it's really looked down upon or ignored, whether it's by denying the reality of climate change or the seeming obsession with bacon. I live in the Southeast, the Bible Belt, so maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I live in Nashville, Tennessee. But funny story, actually, one of the evangelical churches that I went to um, growing up on Father's Day, they actually gave out plastic wrapped bacon to all the dads at the church. I mean, what is the deal with Christians and bacon? I'll be totally transparent and say that I have been vegan now for five years for my health, the environment, and for the animals. I mean, if the Garden of Eden is supposed to represent heaven, why not act like it? Now, I'm not trying to get anyone to go vegan, okay? But I do have some great recipes if you need some, so just like, let me know. But there is 
beauty in knowing where your food comes from. So a way to connect with the earth is truly to shop local and in season at the farmer's market, eating sustainably and using less plastic and refusing single use items and lessening your waste. Those are all just a few ways to leave less of a footprint. Making conscious decisions to take care of my body and the earth around me does feel spiritual to me. And perhaps it does for you too on you know the other side of deconstruction, just wondering how you can connect and, and what's next and having that curiosity. So you can use that as a spiritual tool to connect to the earth. But another simple spiritual practice is to refer back to what I used to do as a kid. I try to make a conscious decision to go outside, disconnect from social media and technology, get my feet in the dirt, and really just be nurtured by nature. Quiet reflection outside, away from distractions, is a beautiful way to ground yourself. It's getting pretty dark early here, um, I guess everywhere <laughs> right now, and so getting outside is more important now than ever. I personally suffer from seasonal depression, but luckily I have a wild dog that basically forces me to go outside and take her on walks, or else she drives me bonkers. And if you're able, move your body. Turn on some really fun music. Open your windows. Let the light shine in. Move how you can and how it feels good to you. Of course, if you can't be outside very often, I recommend bringing outside in. So what I mean by that is get some plants. Get some indoor house plants because they really do bring a sense of peace and healing. But maybe don't get plants if you tend to kill them because that probably wouldn't be a very happy sight. Maybe meditations for you. You can actually use specific grounding meditations to help calm you and center you and help you feel more connected to the earth and your body. To be grounded is to be present. As you become more aware of your surroundings, the more present you are. I've personally used meditation apps before like Headspace, Calm, one Great Mind, and Relax Melodies. They all have a wide variety of different meditations that you can try. And if you don't want to use an app, the thing that I do most often is a body scan meditation. Take just one minute and scan your body with your mind. Just become aware of where you may feel pain or tension, anxiety. Maybe your jaw is clenched or your, your, your chest is tight or your stomach kind of feels like queasy. Whatever it is, just simply notice it and breathe into it. As you inhale, visualize sending your breath to those spots, those spaces in your body. Exhale and let it pass. Just spend a few moments bringing breath to your body. And these days we really all could use more tools and more ways to help us feel calm and grounded. Nature also gives us amazing things like herbal teas. One of my favorite ways to settle into a meditation is by bring myself a cup of herbal tea and then just sitting on the ground and sipping slowly. It's truly that simple, that's it. Leave your phone away, put it away to stop from scrolling. Just spend some time being still. Just doing this simple activity of just being on the ground and sipping tea truly makes me feel supported by the earth beneath me. It's also a great way to get yourself out of the mental state of doing and just being. And if I'm feeling too overwhelmed, to sit down or too overwhelmed to do a body scan, just I'm just too hyperactive. You know what I do? I just do what I know. Do like simple chores around the house, something that your brain can just autopilot. Getting into like a familiar rhythm. Everyday chores like doing laundry or watering your indoor plants or cleaning the dishes. Not only does that kind of get you moving, but you also get an immediate turnaround reward for the things that you're doing, which is also really nice and can be grounding to calm a very anxious mind. Lastly, I would like to add joy. One of my favorite people and someone I look up to very much, Jo Lumen, she once said, um, actually on our podcast, she said to us that she uses joy as resistance. And what she meant is joy is part of the work. How great is that? You can meditate, pray, chant, go on walks, get the plants. You can do all that stuff all you want. But at the end of the day, if you aren't doing something every day that brings you joy, that, that truly just makes you happy, the rest of the other stuff can just become dogma or checklists at the very least. When all is said and done, go get some chocolate, go eat that ice cream, watch that hilarious Netflix series. Think of the little things that make you smile or laugh. Choose those. Laughter is truly one of nature's greatest gifts. It's medicine and it's free. I hope this was helpful. 
hope sometime this week you have the time to implement maybe some of these tools to help ground you, to help calm you, and connect you to the earth. I hope these practices bring you a sense of peace and healing and know that you are loved and that you belong. Thank you all so much. Until next time, bye.